again, and we're going to finish up this one little part. All right. So some of the most interesting, blah, blah, blah. Um, as the following example suggests, you should always discuss shape, center, and spread. And possible outliers whenever you compare distributions of a quantitative variable. All right, so your example, comparing distributions, how do the numbers of people living in households in the UK and South Africa compare? To help answer this question, we use the census at schools random data selection to choose 50 students from each country. We've already talked about this before, that census at schools. Figure 112 is a dot plot of the household sizes reported by the survey respondents. This shape, center, and spread part is all that I want to do because I want to go over one of those when we get to that stem plot. So this page is the last page. When we get to stem plots, we'll stop. So let's look at these. It says compare. So anytime you want to compare, you want to write a paragraph. All right, so you want to do both of them. So we have South Africa and the UK. So let's start with first, the UK. Tell me the shape. Right skew. Oh wait, sorry, I'm looking at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got it on the screen. Sorry, y'all. Symmetric. Yeah, roughly symmetric. One more thing, what else do we need to include? It's unimodal. Mm -hmm. All right, so then let's look at South Africa, which is the top graph. What is it? The right skewed. Yeah, don't forget to see this little point out there which pulls that data, that's what makes it do that. So it's right skewed, but what else? Is that unimodal too? So it is. All right. So where do you think the UK center is? Between like four and five. Yeah. And they say that it's at four. We'll find a definite eventually. What about South Africa? Here's a good way to do it, guys. Like, especially if they're not telling you which one to use. So you can mark off one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, would get you in the four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And you can see where are the dots left. They're left in the four. So if you did it over here, we would mark out that one and one of these. Then we have three more in this category, so we're going to mark out three more. Then we can do one, two, three, 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 four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three left in that one. So then two and two, and then I'm going to mark out three and three. So where are the numbers left? Where are the dots that I didn't mark out? Five, six. I marked out all of the five and left sixes. So these three right here are the ones that I didn't mark out. So your center for this one would be at six. So right now we don't know how to calculate mean and standard deviation and stuff like that. So we're just going by the median, okay? So then your spread, what's your UK spread? So that bottom graph goes from where to where? Two to, two to six. Two to six. What about South Africa? Is that one three to 26? Three to 26. Very good. And what are some possible outliers? Does the UK have any outliers? No. 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 Looks like none. Doesn't mean there's not any, but there's not right now. What about South Africa? 
Is that the only one? 15. 15. 15. Could possibly be an outlier. That's why we say possible. We have a way to figure that out soon, okay? Notice that we discussed the distribution of household size only for the two samples. of 50 students in the previous example, we might be interested in whether the sample data give us convincing evidence of a difference in the population. So a difference in the population distributions of household size for South Africa and the United Kingdom. We'll have to wait a few chapters to decide whether we can reach a conclusion, but our ability to make such an inference you're going to keep seeing that word pop up later will be helped by the fact that the students in our samples were chosen at random. Remember, I told you you're going to keep seeing that because that makes it a good experiment. All right, that's where we're going to stop. I'll load these notes and I'll put the two videos up for you guys. I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to